It's that small guilt that haunts you, part seven. Chill out and dive into the story. If you enjoy our vibe, don't forget to subscribe and share Thread Tonic with your friends. Account one. Years back, I used to visit a website where people would occasionally post small fiction pieces, short stories, poetry, or even songs, even though that wasn't the purpose of the site. This one kid of 17 would post these comedy zombie stories, and while the melodramatic horse shit posted by prominent users would have endless comments of adulation and love, this kid's stories went unnoticed except by me. I would always post a little comment to let him know someone appreciated it. Others started commenting in time, but he would always send me a PM letting me know he posted one and thanks for reading when no one else did. In time, I began to get busy with life. I found a job I hated but paid exceptionally well. The more I worked, the more I earned. I also met my now wife. I stopped commenting. I still got the PMs, but generally either ignored them or replied with a, thanks for letting me know. I'll read the ones I missed soon. One day, I logged onto the site after about a two-week absence. In my inbox was a message from the kid that was unusually plaintive, asking if I could please read the latest story, as it might be his last and he'd appreciate the feedback. If he didn't see me, thanks for reading. It meant a lot to him. I ignored it and didn't log back on for another good while. Eventually, I logged in one weekend and thought, fuck it, I'll read and stop being a dick. So I read them all and enjoyed them immensely. They were genuinely good. So I PM'd the kid, letting him know how good they were and to keep writing. I didn't hear back. A couple of days went by, and I saw someone he spoke to on the site chat room and asked if anyone had seen the kid. There's one of those chat room pauses where it goes from lines and lines of new text to a stop. I got a private chat pop up with a link to a post. I read through it. And it was a post by the kid's mom on his account saying he passed away a few days ago in his sleep after succumbing to cancer. I suddenly remembered a while back he posted saying that his cancer had returned, but he was doing okay. At that point he hadn't posted any stories and he was just another username to me. I felt shit. I still feel shit. I still don't watch zombie things because it reminds me of how if I'd have spared an hour, I might have made one of that kid's last days better. Account 2. I regret blowing my grandfather off so many times when he tried to call. He just wanted to talk, and I was too busy for him. He died about two years ago, and I still feel bad because I know he was lonely and just wanted to be a part of his grandson's life. Account 3. My dad's mother died when I was very, very little, probably four or something around that. At the time, death was a ridiculously new concept. When I heard the news, it was nearly incomprehensible to me. People could die. My dad had a mommy like I had a mommy. Mommies could die? I remember sitting on my mother's lap when I was told the news, and my dad was standing in front of us. I remember repeating almost automatically and incredulously, Your mommy died. Your mommy died. Your mommy died. I'll never forget the look on his face, and I cringe in spite of myself whenever I think about how awful that must have been for him. Just your kid bleeding out something like that while the wound is still fresh. Account 4. There was this really creepy, strange girl in my gym class. She was really tubby and short, and so one day, I was joking with my friends about how she was shaped like a bowling ball. I heard someone say, Hi, Evan. And I turned around and she was standing there right behind me. There are a lot of things you can regret doing in life, but when your words or actions inflict pain, undeserved anyway i was bullied in school but was able to dish out some very deserved pain here and there on another person the look on their face will haunt you until the end of your days account five i was just thinking about this actually when i was like 13 my dad lost his job and my mom didn't work at the time and we had to move out of our house and into a cheaper place we had never been super well off but we'd also never been completely broke like we were at the time we had to move out way before we found a new place, so I stayed with a friend of mine, my parents stayed at a friend of theirs, and my brother stayed with one of his friends for a while. When they finally found a place, my dad and I went over there to spend the first night in the joint. It was tiny, probably about 800 esky, fti, and the four of us were going to have to live in it. I cried like an entitled, spoiled little ingrate, 
It was shitty, and I still feel badly about it. TLDR. My family moved into a tiny new place after my dad lost his job. The first thing I did after going in was cry. Account 6. My mother and I had a falling out. We didn't speak for about two years. One day, about four months ago, my brother called me asking me to take her to the hospital because she was off her meds, on cocaine, and not doing very well. I refused, stating that the only time she communicated with me was when she needed something. She went into a seizure and passed away two days later. I think about her every single day, and I hate myself for what I didn't do. I miss you, Mom. Account 7. The last time I went to visit my grandparents before my grandfather passed away, I'll never forget. My grandfather and I were close, and it was his fondest wish that I learned to play guitar. He even gave me the guitar he saved up to buy when he was 14. He used to pluck away at his guitar at the kitchen table and loved it when my cousin and I would gather around and hear him play or sing along. This time my grandpa was sitting at the table, plucking away as usual. My cousin and I were in the living room watching TV. I was about 12 at the time. I remember looking back at him and watching him play, thinking that I should really go listen to him and sing along, but I wanted to keep watching whatever it was I was watching, so I didn't. I never heard him play again. I still can't play guitar. It haunts me. TLDR, my grandfather used to play guitar. Instead of watching him play, I watched TV instead and never got to hear him play again because he died shortly thereafter. I'm a piece of shit. Account 8. When I was 17, I am 43 now, I had a job as a restaurant hostess. One Friday night, this kid comes in that I recognize from school. He was alone, but asked for a table for six as it was his birthday, and he was expecting some other people to join him. The place got crazy busy, typical for a Friday night, and occasionally I would run by and see him still sitting there alone at the big table with a bunch of menus. At some point, this kid's mother calls and tells me that she thinks her son is there expecting some people and that they are not coming. She sounded so sad like her heart was breaking for her kid who'd been cruelly pranked. I was so fucking busy that I forgot to tell him. I'm not sure how much longer he sat there and waited. By the time I remembered, he was gone, and I felt like the biggest piece of shit on the planet. I've actually thought about posting this story for a really long time, and it still haunts me. So, thanks, Exitorp, for reminding me to share it. Account 9. There was this girl in my elementary school who had the same birthday as me, the same classes, etc., but she had some serious social and mental issues. Nobody liked her because she was mean, would openly stare at you and say the stupidest shit. Our mothers are best friends to this day. I used to be forced to have play dates and invite this girl to my sleepovers, but I hated it. If people found out she was coming, they wouldn't show up. I would get questioned at school as to why I liked her so much when she would be mean to me and everyone else. For one birthday sleepover in seventh grade or so, she had to leave for a bit to get her braces tightened. In a cruel and bitter anger, I showed my friends how much I didn't want her there by dunking her teddy bear that she carried everywhere in a clean toilet and giving it a swirly. When she got home, we said someone spilled water on it, so she just kissed it and continued her annoying, rude shit. It's been years, and I still seriously can't stand this girl and her mother, but I've forgiven her because I recognize how many untreated issues she's had. I still feel bad about giving her bear a swirly. Count 10. They sent a kid with Down syndrome to commit a suicide attack on our post. He panicked and held his finger on the trigger for one long burst in the air. I lifted my head behind the shelter and shot him straight in the forehead. I am a nurse on pediatric ICU today because of it, but guilt is still keeping me awake many, many nights. Count 11. When I was a new teenager, 12, 14-ish, I used to play a lot with stuffed animals. I had a ton of them. I would make up stories for them and imagine a ton of different scenarios. Each stuffed animal had a backstory, and each play session was like an episode in the story. Pretty tame, but here is where it gets dark. I would use my dog as the bad guy by attacking him with the stuffed animals. He would fight back with the animals, so I sort of assumed he was playing along, but honestly, the way he snarled and bit the animals, he really didn't understand. He would end up trying to run away and hide in a corner, but I would follow him so I could defeat the enemy. Now I realize that I abused my dog. He would get mad and snap at my parents at times, and they didn't understand why. The dog was mine, given to me for my birthday, but after this, he stopped wanting to be with me. I started dragging him to my room so we could play. 
He died a few months ago. Account 12. About two years ago, I'm at home on a weekday because I had been unemployed for a few months by this point, and my doorbell rings unexpectedly. I open the door to see my occasional smoking buddy at my door, who lived one apartment complex over from me. As she was one to do once in a while, she asked to bum a smoke. This time was different, though. After I grabbed my pack, I could see that she'd been crying and had a washcloth covering her arm. I asked her what was wrong, and she immediately started crying, and her language became indiscernible. Since I was having trouble understanding what she was saying, she eventually lifted the washcloth off her arm, and there were three large, deep cuts going across her arm. I immediately entered panic mode and tried to get information from her. Well, she tried to say many different things, but the phrases I could make out were along the lines of, my fiancé did it to me, I did this, and my knife holder fell. When she couldn't get her story straight, I immediately told her I was calling 911 and that she should sit down and wait on my couch. I told the cops what was going on and where they could find us. Eventually, three squad cars and an ambulance showed up, asked us a bunch of questions, and then took her to the hospital. What haunts me about this situation is that I was the only person in the area she knew since she and her boyfriend were from out of state, and I barely even knew her. Because of this, I was the only person she could call to pick her up from the hospital. When I got there, I found out that she was still in her room and hadn't been released yet. She had gotten all of her stitches, but there was still a nurse talking to her. Shortly after I arrived, the nurse left to get the doctor and told her that she shouldn't leave because her cuts were obviously done with hesitation, in his opinion. I was stunned at this point, but I didn't speak up, and after a lot of arguing between her and the doctor, he said that he wasn't going to stop her. I drove her home, which was my biggest regret about this situation. Also, I let her talk during the drive home because she was still physically shook up. The only thing I said in the car ride back was that, if your boyfriend did this to you, or is what caused this to happen, he isn't worth it. This is not what she wanted to hear, and she immediately stopped talking. After I asked her if everything was going to be okay, she said yes, but got out of my car angrily and immediately went into her apartment and locked the door. I never saw her at her apartment after this, and I didn't hear from her for three months after this incident. Eventually, I was outside smoking a cigarette, and she and her boyfriend walked up. They made some small talk or whatever, and she was all smiles. It didn't last long because I really didn't know what to do in this situation, and I never saw her again. Honestly, my biggest regrets about this are not going to the hospital with her, not making her stay, and not trying harder to check up on her after bringing her back. I wouldn't be surprised if people said that I'm a horrible person for not doing those things, but honestly, this was the only time I've ever been in this situation in my life, was honestly scared shitless about the whole thing, and was in such a panic that most of those options didn't even register. A few months after the last time I saw her, my landlord told me that she and her boyfriend moved out of town. I hope that she is doing all right. Account 13. In high school and college, I always felt guilty about asking my parents for money, even if the amount was just $5. We didn't grow up rich, so I hated asking my parents for money. I always tried to make it up to them by working hard in school. I'm in medical school now, but I still feel really guilty that one, I had to ask for money, and two, I perhaps did not go to a good enough school for them to be proud. 14. When I was around 14 or so, I don't really remember the exact age, I asked my dad to drop me off at the movie theater with my friends. Being the generally awesome dad that he is, he happily agreed and asked if I needed any money for the movies. I said sure, and that I would be ready to leave in about half an hour after a shower and whatnot. I have to preface the next part of the story by briefly explaining how awesome my dad is. He works all the time and buys nothing frivolous for himself. He has pretty much never said no to something my sister or I truly wanted. It's not that he just bought us every little impulse item, but if we wanted something of substance, music lessons, skateboard, etc., he would always make sure we got it. He was the fun parent who would sneak us out to ice cream under the guise of running errands or throw us on his shoulders, even though he had just worked all day holding a camera on his shoulder. Anyway, so he is dropping me off at the movies, and on the way there he says, You know, it is my birthday today. I immediately felt terrible, as I hadn't even said anything, nor had my family done anything for him that day. I told him he could take me home and we could hang out, and that I was truly sorry. 
but he insisted that I go to the movies with my friends. When I got dropped back off at home by a friend's parent, he was hanging out alone drinking one of his most expensive bottles of wine. He loves wine. My sister was at work or something, and my mom was actually out of state at the time doing some business training thing. I hung out with him for a while, and he eventually wanted to go to bed. It was a pretty lame night. Looking back, I think it would have made him a lot happier if I had asked him to go to the movies with me, or said it was his birthday and we should do something together like order pizza and watch DVDs. Account 15. I haven't spoken to my father in seven years. When my parents got divorced, my mom convinced me he was an evil person, and that if I loved her, I had to hate him. I made it extremely hard on him, told him I hated him when I saw him once every two weeks, and told him I wished my stepdad could adopt me so my real father would just leave my life forever. On Christmas seven years ago, he called to say hi, and I shoved it in his face. He was silent for a while and then said, Abe can have you, give the phone to your mom. Abe was my stepdad. That was the last time I heard from him. I feel awful about it. Account 16. One day, a carpet man came to fit the carpet, obviously. I was around 13. He was a very innocent, lovely man and a little bit mental. He was at my house all day. My mom made him a coffee, then went out. While she was gone, I offered to make him a coffee, and I just remember the carpet man's face lighting up in delight. I made him the coffee and left it on the kitchen side and totally forgot about it. Oh, the guilt. Account 17. Father got diagnosed with pancreatic cancer last December, nine months after I lost my mother to breast cancer. I was home on break from college and spent every day with him in the hospital for three weeks. The one day I didn't go visit him, I had a job interview and went to go visit a friend at school who had just got back from Afghanistan. He went in for a simple procedure, didn't take well to the anesthetic, and didn't wake up. Still dealing with it today. Account 18. One time I shot a lizard with an airsoft rifle on a dare. I could see the dent in his skull and he just started twitching before he died. I felt like the worst goddamn human being on the planet after that. It's strange how easily we get the feels over things like animals and toys, etc., but I regret it all the time. 